So, um, basically, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we're asking, again, is, you know, this, in this case, I'm giving you the center. Uh, I'm giving you what A is, and I'm giving you the eccentricity. Okay. So if, we, if you guys remember when in class, um, you will be given the formula for the eccentricity. But what we talked about was the eccentricity kind of tells us as far as the shape, especially when we're talking about a circle. Um, the eccentricity is kind of gives us like the shape of the ellipse. When the eccentricity is equal to zero, we have a perfect circle. So the larger and larger that the eccentricity is, the more and more spread out kind of like our circle is, now, or our ellipse is. So Jacob, when in the same respect, if you have an ellipse, that's you know like a perfect circle. Well, if you have it as a hyperbola, the kind of the shape is going to be similar, but obviously the hyperbola opens out, right? So if it's um, if your eccentricity is a much larger number, like you know for instance, like you'd have an ellipse that's you know very very ovalish or very uh, thin. Well, the same thing is going to be with the hyperbola. It's just going to be facing away from each other rather than facing towards it. Okay. Um, when we're talking about eccentricity. That is equal to C over A. Now, in this case, or I'm sorry, let's look at it this way. Eccentricity is C over A. They, we already know A is 5. So what usually comes a problem with this, Zach, is when people aren't paying attention, they have a hard time really understanding it, saying, all right, well, the eccentricity is 2, and A is 5. How do we get 2 if 5 is in the denominator? What number do I have to have in my numerator that's going to make that 2? Yes, Kevin? 10. So now, given this piece of information, I can now say that without talking when the teacher's talking, that c equals 10 and a equals 5. Why is that important? Because once we know two values, either a, b, and c, once we know two of them, we can find the third by using our formula. And remember, the formula for an ellipse, for a hyperbola, is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. It's different than ellipses. You're adding your a squared and your b squared. But now I can find out what b is. So I'll just go ahead and do this math. So I have 10 squared equals 5 squared plus b squared. That's 100 equals 75 plus b squared. I was thinking of 25 here. OK, now. They're not asking me to find anything as far as the value of b. So I don't need to solve for b. And I'm grading your guys' quizzes. A lot of you guys went to solving for b, which is great if they ask you, like, what is the covertices? Um, but in that case, Danny, you don't need to have your phone out. So you can actually just put that away. And yeah, you can just go from here. It's cool. Um, so I went through this whole information as far as finding a, b, and c. But in reality, Caitlin, the best thing we need to do when starting a problem is to do what? Not use your phone. Huh? Put away your phone. <laughs> Put away your phone. What's the question? Huh? I did. I just wrote that in there. So, Caitlin, what is the most important thing that we should be doing? Plotting the information. So, what information do we have? We know that the center is at 0, 0. And not only is it important to plot the information, it's important to label the information. Because I guarantee, guys, when you're taking a test, what happens is you have so much stress of doing all, this, all these other things you're supposed to be doing, you forget things, right? Or you get confused, and things fall off your desk, and so forth. Yes? Is it better to call the teacher the first time so you don't get your variables confused? No, I mean, if you, I mean, the center is the center. It's not a vertex. So it's a totally different thing. So I don't want you to mathematically confuse that, because they're not equivalent. Yes, they both have the form HK. That's how they're similar. But um, just, just remember, I mean, if you, I would just write in, you know, maybe right in center. So therefore, you know, c is the distance from, c is the distance from the center to your foci. That would make a little bit more sense. So we know my center is at 0, 0. And not only is that important, I also, that tells me the h and k. All right? Um, then the other thing is, it says it has a horizontal focal axis. Well, I always was calling this a transverse axis, but the focal axis, um, it's just another way that the book used. So if you were confused on that, you probably could have flipped through the pages and seen, oh, focal axis, basically the same thing as the transverse axis. So I'm going to draw that on my graph. That's important because once I know where the transverse axis is, 
What lies on the transverse axis? Vertices. The vertices, the foci, the foci and the center, right? And so now I have A and C. Well, what does A tell me again? A tells me the distance from the center to my vertices. Now, I don't need to graph this. But the reason why graphing it like this is now I know that I have a uh, horizontal transverse axis. That means the equation, because I'm going to have two equations. I, I erase them, though. So, But my two equations, remember, it's always a squared minus b squared. Always a squared minus b squared for hyperbolas, correct? Always a squared minus b squared for hyperbolas, the formulas. Always a squared minus b squared, whereas ellipses, a squared was always larger than b squared. Now, when it's a horizontal transverse axis, the x coordinate is always above a. So in this case, it would be x minus h squared, and that's y minus k squared. Okay, I apologize. I erased them from over there, but you guys should have them already written down in your notes. Well, now, guys, do I know what a squared is? No, but can I figure it out? Sure. Do I know what b squared is? Yes. Do I know what h and k are? Yes. So that's all you have to do. So x minus 0 squared over 5. I'm just plugging everything in just so you guys can see what I did. So what I want you guys to understand about this one, which is a little bit different, is a squared is not always larger than b squared. Yes, Anita. Because they said my eccentricity was 2. That means c over a is equal to 2. Well, they told me 5. So what number do I need to put above 5 so that it's equal to 2? And that's the only number would be 10. Does that make sense? Yes. Because b squared minus 25, b squared is 75. B is, but we're not solving for b. We're not plugging in b. We're plugging in b squared. So that's why you don't need to find it. However, if I said, hey, what are the covertices? Then you need to find b and go from the center to find co. But that's not what this problem is asking. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Preguntas? Chocolates? I'm going to do 29 next.